But as of right now, uh, we're not going to be doing it tonight. And, you know, uh, when when we do do it, we're probably going to be talking about this. But, you know, I'm sitting at work. I'm just, I'm just working, trying to make a living, trying to put food on the table, just doing the right things. And all of a sudden, I'm getting this, this text from Mark Holmes. WTF, what is going on with your team? Now, AJ Brown, like, and I know he ran and did a video where he twisted the whole thing and everything like that. It's like, the guy couldn't wait. Couldn't wait. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I, got to tell you, I gotta tell you, I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know why he did what he did. Now, for those, and you all probably know this, but why did AJ Brown go stealth in social media? That's the question. Dov Kleeman wrote this. AJ Brown has deleted all Pound Eagles related content from his Instagram. They play the Buccaneers on Monday night. Then Dov Kleeman wrote this. Pound Eagles AJ Brown has also deactivated his Twitter account. So AJ Brown has completely and utterly gone stealth. He is gone stealth. And the question is why? That's the question. And here's the other thing we've got to add to this. He did this knowing that everybody would start talking about it. He knew that, okay? So why did he do it? Now, there are a couple lines of thoughts about why. Um, if you have... Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods here on this playoff Saturday. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? <laughs> That's right. We're talking about playoffs. Now, see, I want you to know, I try to be a, a, a community fella here on YouTube and help out my fellow YouTubers. I am always trying to work and do the best for everybody including Philly 500. See, I get the scoop about things that are going on with this team that he doesn't even know about. So I text him and say, Philly, what's going on with A.J. Brown? Did you see he deleted all his content? And he's like, I don't know what's going on here. It's, it's, it's crazy. So, you know, he's on his break, got to take a, you know, while he's trying to put food on the table. And you can see he hasn't been successful. You see, you see, it, it's been hard times for Philly 500. You can see that the man's starving to death. You know, he's always saying, Mark Holmes, I'm coming for your meat because he's trying to put food on the table. Now, everybody help out Philly 500 because, you know, he, he, the man's starving. He is star. He's definitely starving for some good football right now. I can say <laughs> his team. You know, I, I tell you what, let me give you a preview of the post game post game Nick Sirianni press conference. Well, what happened was that second game, we got our ass kicked, or the second half. We just got our ass totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We sucked. The second half, we sucked. We couldn't stop the run. Every time they got the ball, they went down and got points. We got our ass totally kicked in the second half. That's what it boiled down to. It was a horse performance in the second half. Horse I'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. Coaching, all, we're all, all, our coaching did a horrible job. The players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked in that second half. It sucked. It stunk. Basically, that's what we expect to hear after the game Monday night. That team is in disarray completely. Um, A.J. Brown, we don't know what's going on with him. Nick Sirianni is an idiot. You know, you've got Jalen Hurts who hasn't thrown a pass all week, with you know, after dislocating his finger. They're reeling, and, you know, you reap what you sow. If you're going to be there for the good times, Eagle fans, you got to be there for the bad times. Trust me, I know with the Dallas Cowboys where we have been disappointing in the playoffs, and we end up taking on our nemesis, the Green Bay Packers. I think out of the last 10 games, we've won two, including the last two playoff games against Aaron freaking Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, and 
formerly Mike McCarthy. So this is a chance because Mike McCarthy can look across the, across the field there and see the guy that took his wife. Matt LaFleur got the job because Aaron Rodgers wanted Mike McCarthy gone. Now, Green Bay, what's interesting is, even with Aaron Rodgers, even with the new coach and everything else, they've had the same problems they had before they got rid of Mike McCarthy. They had Aaron Rodgers, MVP, great team, number one seed, but they just haven't been able to have the success in the playoffs as well. Now, this game is huge. This game is is going to determine <laughs> if, if there's the Cowboys lose this game, then yes, I could see Mike McCarthy getting fired. There would be no bigger embarrassment to have nine all pros, nine all pros on your team. Home field advantage going against a guy who's got his first year as a starter with a young team. You have to win this game. There's no if, ands, or buts. And for Micah Parsons, who says, you know, this might be my last ride with Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn, ports are, and this is as soon as, I, I've, I've told you guys this. If you watch Joe Boo Sports Report, I said, because this was what happens every year after Dan Quinn the first year took the worst defense in football, took the worst statistically defense that the Dallas Cowboys ever had, and basically <clears throat> turned him around with pretty much the same players and has been a trajectory of getting better and better and better. That guy has reinvented his career. I remember Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp joking about Dan Quinn. You mean the guy, the guy that got fired that had the biggest collapse in, in, in Super Bowl history that he going to be the defense? Oh, you, you know how that went. But now everybody wants him. And I told you, I said, you know, Dan Quinn, being a head coach, yeah, that's great. But not all head coaching jobs are the same. If you're telling me being the head coach of the Panthers or the defensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys with Micah Parsons and Diggs and all that, that, that it's a higher profile being the head, uh, excuse me, the defensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys than it is to be the head coach of the Panthers. I said that about the Cardinals. I said that about the Chargers. But I said the job opening that would scare me would be as if the Seattle Seahawks moved on from Pete Carroll because that's a place he knows. It's a great organization. It's a great franchise. The team is not in bad shape. They need a quarterback maybe. But that's family. That's home. And that would be the one that I would say Dan Quinn would wait for. And lo and behold, it's open. And so you may see Dan Quinn after the playoffs here, hopefully after the Super Bowl, become the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. We are fortunate that we were able to retain Will McClay. That Will McClay is happy being here, being VP of player personnel. And the reason I say this is that I want to remind you, because see, what happens with so many of you guys is we watch the shows. The shows, they should put a disclaimer on the shows, kind of like you do with cigarettes, you know, smoking cigarettes can cause cancer. They need to put on the talking shows, <coughs> excuse me, for entertainment purposes only. No factual relevance, relevance, re, rele, you know what I mean. Because they are so wrong so often. Let me take you back a moment in time here, because this was Skip, 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 Skip and Shannon just two years ago. Remember, Jerry Jones said Dallas could do something, quote, unconventional with their selection. Last night, he spoke about how happy he is with the result. We knew we were in the wheelhouse uh, there, and so we had a, a very clear, it's about as clear of uh, uh, on the board 
decision that I've seen, a unanimous decision in the room that when he came to us and we had the pick to take him. Let, let me put it like this. We have both of them, this was printed three days ago, below him. Both of those players are below him. Can you see that? <laughs> Don't show him that. I'm not going to show him that. <laughs> Don't show him that. <laughs> showing off the secret draft board there. <laughs> Shannon, you buying what Jerry Jones is selling? No. Jerry turned the press conference in all about him, but Skip, look, I'm going to be very <laughs> sensitive to, to Jerry. Mm. I just think right now things are not progressing mentally as, as well as they should. Skip, you can't show that. You see what Steve, Skip. You see like, Skip. I know he's not. And Steve like that. Jerry, don't know. Mm. <laughs> Put that thing down. <laughs> That's what Steven said. Put that thing down. First of all, no, I don't buy it. Because, first, Skip, everything that I had seen up until this point, he was ranked somewhere in the 40s on everybody's. Kuiper had him 33, but go ahead. Yeah. 33, that, that was the earliest. Yeah. Oh, in the 40s, I think okay. Jerry, Jerry, Daniel Jeremiah had him mm -hmm. in like 42. I've seen some publications had him in the 50s. Okay. So I don't doubt it. Let's but... just let's just go. Let's just yeah. say, okay, four, let's split the difference. We'll say he's like... High 30s, maybe even low 40s. Okay. You take him at 24. Mm. If you're going to take an offensive lineman, Skip, I'll take, take Tyler Linderbaum. Mm -hmm. Because if you think hey, about it. I agree. Out of Iowa, a center. And your run game hadn't been the same since who retired, Skip? Thank you. That guy who Travis was a first-round pick. Yes. Who was a just perennial pro bowler. Yes. Watch Linderbaum. Watch, watch what happens. You, you just know what's, he'll be a perennial Plug and play, yes. first year, just watch. You'll start making Pro Bowls. Yeah, Go ahead. Hey, you're exactly right. The skip Jerry says, well, we're not going to take guys with red flags. What about yellow flags? <laughs> because this guy was flagged. This guy was flagged 16 times last year, 12 of them for holding. The Cowboys, the most penalized offensive line in football. Now you no, just, the most penalized team. Team in football. Yes, thank you. Skip. And the offensive line was, was penalized more than any other offensive Absolutely. line. Absolutely. You, you got tired of Connor Williams. By the way, just a quick point on your 16. You realize he had 16 flags, did Tyler Smith, at yeah. Tulsa in 12 games. <laughs> if, if you took the 16 and projected into the 17 game, NFL game season, right. that would lead the league. Yes. Even at 17 games, it would lead the league. Go ahead. And, and that's the thing, Skip. I just believe you reach. Now, if you didn't want Linderbaum, the center, that you could I, I, are, are you getting this now? Game because I, I, then you were strong at all points. Yeah. You had Ty Smith, you had Zach Martin, and you had Frederick. Zeke was running up and down. Everybody, Zeke, the best running back in football. We can't stop Zeke. Zeke getting five yards a clip. Zeke was getting skipped three yards before anybody even touched him. True. Tra once Travis Frederick retired, yep. look at Zeke's staff. The moment that man announced his retirement, and go back and look at Zeke's staff, and you tell me what you see. Okay, you don't want Linda Bond. It's the least sexy position in the line, but it's the anchor. And it's the easiest position to and, skip. And usually it's the quarterback. You, you make the calls on the yes. projections, but yes. go ahead. And if you mm -hmm. look at it, Skip, look at all the centers that's been mm -hmm. taken in the first round. Yep. Those guys play. They play long time. Creed Humphrey came in and was one of the better centers for uh, Kansas City last year. University and of Oklahoma. Came in go. right in and made the offense, solidify the offensive line. Did he make a? Did he make the Pro Bowl? He no, made, no, he was uh, top. I think he first made it. All, all rookie. rookie. Yeah, right. absolutely. Okay. All right. Skip, and if you didn't like the offensive lineman, the Florida State, the edge rusher, Jermaine Johnson. <sighs> now, Skip, the kid started that at Georgia. Let you know how talented they are. Now, Georgia had five guys, four of them, three or four of them on the defensive line. He couldn't get on the field yeah. enough at Georgia. No shame there. No shame you there. You just saw why. And they, most in the NFL history, five defensive players take. And they got another one, 88, I think his last name is Carter, mm -hmm. who's probably going to be a first rounder next year. Probably. Skip, he was right there because so now. Jermaine Johnson's second. He goes to Florida State. You get an opportunity to get somebody to replace Randy Gregory. Now, all the, all the marks that I saw, it's like he's a combination of Walker and Hutchinson. He's Have you heard enough? But he has the hands and the technique of Hutchinson, but he has the twitchiness of, of a Walker. All right. I'm just going to leave that right there because... It's time to eat some crow with that one because here it is. Now, Jermaine Johnson, <clears throat> he did have seven and a half sacks for the Jets this year. I'm not going to say that that would have been an awful pick. But when you've got an all-pro guard in his second season, let me say that again, an all-pro guard Who's that game? In, in his second season, uh, that you've done something. Saying. You have done something really good. And this is where the power of having Will McClay here. And it's kind of like lightning strikes twice. 
Because you may remember Zach Martin. Johnny Manziel was the sexy pick that Jerry Jones wanted to get. You know, famously, we've heard that, you know, that, that, that Steven had to take the draft card away from Johnny Manziel. Could you imagine if we had drafted Johnny Manziel to be the heir apparent to Tony Romo and didn't have Zach Martin, who has now tied, I think, all of the all pros in a career with the Dallas Cowboys greats? Yeah, it's not sexy. Doing the right thing is not sexy. But damn, you're telling me that we have an all-pro guard when they literally, the talking at Mel Kuyper had him at like 36. And yeah, Mel Kuyper don't know shit. Skip Bayless don't know shit. Will McClay does. And that doesn't mean that you hit on every single pick because those are the guys that got Dak Prescott in the fourth round. The guy here who's an all pro. They didn't move up and spend tons of draft picks. They didn't go out in free agency and trade tons of draft picks for the Russell Wilson. They found him and lightning in a bottle. So as we get ready for these playoff games, and we'll be live streaming the games, we'll live stream every single game. I think my man Game Time will join us uh, this evening for the uh, early game. Uh, we'll be watching the Texans versus the Cleveland Browns and the uh, uh, East Side Herald Bowl. And then, of course, the, the Ice Bowl 2, which will be Kansas City, formerly the Dallas Texans, versus the Miami Dolphins. I think that's going to be some frozen fish. I think it's going to be frozen fish. It is going to be so cold. They're talking about this maybe being the fourth coldest football game ever. Dangerous cold. I, I, I just don't know how they do it. Because when you're cold and you get hit, it's just like being hit by a baseball bat. Like knives are going into you. It hurts. And I have to say shout out to anybody who can play in that kind of weather. So the question will be is for our Cowboys will be is, can they stop the run in Aaron Jones? And you can expect to see a lot of that. I'm going to finish this up this morning before I go to a memorial service for my good friend Alex. With Get Up, let's go to the tape. And so here, here's this week's edition of Micah Parsons Has Something to Say. Yeah, I don't know if I've had this this much confidence or a greater, greater feel than I have with this offense, with this team, um, with – our approach and, and how we're going to go and take care of things. You're going to be phenomenal or forgotten? Hopefully it's phenomenal. Well, I'm not even hopefully. I'm going to be phenomenal. I'm not even going to let y'all think that. I'm going to be phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> All, right. All right. So those were in the reverse order that I was expecting. But either way, you heard Dak say what he always says, and you heard Micah say <laughs> what he always says. And so, look, they, they've got to go in confident. I'm going to get uh, keys to everybody. But as you talk about Aaron Jones, I, I – I thought it was interesting the way you said, you know, get Jordan Love comfortable and all that. Yeah. On some level, I feel like the Packers are playing with house money. Yes, I yeah. get it. He's a kid, Jordan Love and everything else. But their season is already a success. I mean, there's so I can feel it getting very tight in that building if this game is close at halftime. Well, no, and, and that's the point, right? You want to get this game into the fourth quarter with your young quarterback that has shown throughout fourth quarters of games that he can be a guy that finds a way to make plays. Jordan Love right now is showing you that the Green Bay Packers made the right decision. They made the right decision in drafting him. They made the right decision in moving on from Aaron Rodgers as Pat McAfee had to recently this week. When you look at all the different things – that we've seen from this team down the stretch, the one thing that stands out most is how much I'm sorry. Is how much better the offense is with Aaron Jones. And I think adding that piece to what Jordan Love can do along with those first and second year receivers is huge, especially playing at AT&T. We did not talk about that in the meeting. That did not come up in the meeting. You mean, you mean Pat McAfee and Brian Gooden no, 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 compare no. together? Fair enough. Okay. In the meantime, that was very funny. All right. Let, let me, here's what I always like to bring uh, for everyone who's getting set to watch this game. Is because we can put the picks up on the screen. Everybody thinks the Cowboys are going to win, and I get it. 
So I always like to ask everybody, what's the one thing that you give the fans to watch at the beginning of the game that tells you how this thing is going to go? So, D. Wood, what do you have your eye on early in this game that might say to you, hey, the Packers are going to be in this? I, I want to see how this Green Bay defense adjusts to C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb over the last 12 games has about 1,400 yards. That man Unstoppable. That falling out of his mind. We see the connection that, that Dak Prescott has with C.D. Lamb. So, what are they going to do to try to take him away? Because he's such a big part of what Dallas wants to do offensively. Yeah, that's a, a critical part, clearly, of what they've been doing of late. I, I would say that C.D. Lamb has been the offensive player of the year yeah. over the oh last three months. What are you watching? Tony Pollard. Green Bay really struggles playing defense, especially on first down. Got this great staff from Hembo. They give a 5.8 yards a carry. So, to R.C.'s point about Aaron Jones, I think this game's really simple. I think Dallas has 39 minutes of time of possession. Oh. Greedy. Tony Powell rushes for 150, <coughs> 180 yards. What? And they control the line of scrimmage. When last time oh, you seen yeah. When last, last time you seen Mike, last time you seen Mike McCarthy call a bunch of run plays like that? Yeah. Well, That's we, not in his DNA. Yeah, Tony Pollard better go for 99 on one of them. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're halfway there. <laughs> Graziano, you also like the Cowboys big in this game. Yeah, it'd take Tony Pollard three weeks to get 180. <laughs> yeah. That's not, look, I mean, but it's a horrendous matchup for the Green Bay defense. Dallas, uh, Dak Prescott fourth in the league in QBR on throws between the numbers. Green Bay's defense is 32nd in the league in opposing QBR on throws between. Their opponent's QBR between the numbers is 88.2. Mm. Tom Brady's QBR in 2007 was 87. Mm. So you have the, literally the, the greatest. Best, the best quarterback in the world when you play the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> ever. <tonight>. No. Mm. <laughs> By kind of a lot. So I, think it, I just think it sets up very bad. I think the Cowboys I, I can score 40 points in this game. I, 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 think I, I hope so. I, get, I hear you. And Mike T is saying this, and I get it. And yet, I don't mean to sound like our friend Mr. Stephen A. Smith, but – Every time you think everything should go their way, RC is exactly but what does it is not to. I, and, and I know, but like, there's there's a first time for everything, right? Right. They're, they're like every time, like 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 there's times that teams evolve, right? There there's there's New York Giants teams that that get into the playoffs that are nine and seven mm -hmm. that find a way to beat the best team there right. ever was. And so I think that the Dallas Cowboys have matured. I believe their quarterback has matured more than anyone in the NFL. Now it is, can that quarterback and Mike McCarthy make the right decision mm -hmm. in crunch time? There you go. We haven't seen that from those two. That is why. <clears throat> well, we're going to leave it right there. And I will say that Mike McCarthy's 9-7 uh, and seven Green Bay Packers of 2010 which lost to the Atlanta Falcons and the Bears on the road, which was three and five on the road during that season, ended up beating the Pittsburgh Steelers in Dallas in the Super Bowl. So don't look past anybody. You have to go in there with a sense of urgency that you could lose, and you could lose everything. So there we have it, good people. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. i got to figure out what kind of sub we're going to do for tomorrow's game. Um, any suggestions, by all means, let me know. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report.